Hi there everyone, my name is Jaakko. I wanted to make this video about new global illumination plugin from NVIDIA and how we can use this in Unreal Engine 4.27. So yes, now finally we do have a actual binary from NVIDIA, so we were able to use the GI plugin before, but we needed to compile that from the from the uh, NVIDIA's version of the engine, from the NVIDIA branch. Uh, I think that's called NVIDIA RG RTX branch. So uh, that was uh, always a hassle. So uh, now we actually have a real binary that we can we can uh, start to use. So uh, I'm not sure if this is really a final version. I don't think uh, so. I think this is still a sort of beta, but like at least now we can we can get uh, we can get and start to play with this. So you can see that in Unreal Engine Marketplace we have now a page for this, but uh, it still goes to external link. And this may be the case for the future as well. So this is NVIDIA's uh, work. So we just click this. Uh, we can go to NVIDIA developer page in here. And we need to have an account in order to get this. So I actually just uh, log in with my NVIDIA account. And then you can see you have like, you can also do the SDK if you if you want. So we have like, then you scroll down, we can see we have a download RDX GI Unreal Engine plugin in here. So here we have like some information. We have like Windows 10, 64-bit, and then engine support. We need a uh, 4.27, uh, the latest version of the engine in order to use this. And then we have like the latest version of RTX plugin. I just need to click Agree and download. So that's that's how we can actually get the plugin. So when we download it, we can actually see we get some files. So so we have like this zip file, what I already actually. Uh, extracted so we have like samples we have like a uh, quick start guide and installation guide and then we have samples and we have like uh, RTX GI I'm going to check what we have in sample so we have actually sample project in here if you want to take a look at that as well so you have like um, uh, if we go back in here we can see we have like this RTX GI folder and in order to get this installed properly we need to make sure that we put it in the right folder so if we go to our Unreal Engine installation in our machine, we can see if we use the default uh, folder where we normally install that, we can see that we just go back in here, Epic Games and Unreal Engine, then we need to go to Engine, we can look here and we need to make sure that we go to the plugins and then inside the plugins we need to make sure that we are dealing with runtime. So we go to runtime folder and then we just need to go to NVIDIA's folder where we have these others, these other a plugin so we just drag and drop this here and when you're doing this make sure that your unreal engine is off so it's not uh, it, it's not running because if it's running then it maybe doesn't work properly actually i did it didn't work in because i actually did the mistake so make sure you close that and then you just copy that to, to your uh, nvidia folder and then you start the engine so here i have this scene and in order to get the plugin working we need to do a couple of things first so I'm gonna go to edit and plugins and I'm just gonna write RTX so we can see that now we have a NVIDIA RTX global emulation plugin in here and make sure it's enabled if it's not enabled then just enable it and maybe you have to restart the engine also we need to make sure that ray tracing is enabled in our project so I'm gonna go to project settings and I'm just gonna go here and do ray tracing like so so make sure this is enabled and also Make sure that uh, your graphics RHI is set DirectX 12. So if you go to uh, platforms, Windows, you need to make sure that you are running this uh, DirectX 12 and make sure also that you're using this, this uh, check in here, DirectX 12 or 12, um, 11 or 12 here. So when you have set that, maybe you need to restart the engine as well. And one more time. So now uh, here we are and we still don't have a <coughs> Uh, anything global emission happening so there's still a couple of things that we need to do so first um, let's do and drag this ddgi volume into our scene so this volume is uh, a little bit similar as uh, light mass importance volume was when we d used to do the baking stuff so this volume uh, defines the area that we want to be able to use uh, global emission so um I'm just gonna drag this guy and maybe scale this up so we can fill the entire area that we wanna 
uh, we want to have the effect with this. So something like this maybe works, which is nice. And still we don't have this enable, so we need to en enable this by using some console commands that um, I'm going to show you guys. So we can go to developer tools from the window, developer tools, and then we just do this um, output log so we can actually see what's going on. Uh, so we need to run two, two of two commands basically, and I have them listed in my website, but also I'm going to put this to the description of this uh, YouTube video so you can grab this copy paste from here. So first I'm going to take this uh, global emission experimental plugin enable command. So I'm just going to do this like so. So now we get the feedback from the console that now it's true, it's enabled. Also I'm going to go and do this RTX GIDDGI1 uh, one means uh, enable or true. So I'm going to do this and now you can see that it, it got really enabled we can see that we start to see this bounce light happening so it's awesome now we are able to do real-time hardware based uh, uh, global illumination so yeah it's 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 interesting but there's a lot of things a lot of more things that we can actually do so so now we are we can still see it's a little bit crude and we can see that if we have um actually let's do let's do something else so i'm gonna uh, delete this light so we just shut everything down i'm gonna go and uh, grab some cube to our scene and i'm gonna do uh, emissive material to this cube so we can we can start to preview so i'm just gonna do maybe a uh, new material in here i'm gonna go this emissive like so and i'm just gonna go here and hit the tree to get our three-way vector in here and I'm gonna do white and I'm gonna plug this to emissive color but this is still gonna be quite weak so well it's yeah it's this kind of uh, maybe it's enough so if you want to change this strength you can also do multiply so you can just like mult and then just do this and you can also do parameter in here so you can uh, increase the strength of the emissive value by something like that but i'm going to do default value like one so okay so now you can see that yes we have real real time very very uh this is not a fake this is a real global illumination and this is just absolutely brilliant if i if you ask me i mean just look at this it's uh it's there's no hard shadows it's soft and so on so we could actually Maybe just uh, mock up some uh, like a light, like a kind of office light or this some studio lights, something like this. We can maybe make it a little bit wider. This kind of thing could actually look already kind of nice. We could just do this. So now we have already something which looks actually pretty nice. So we could do this. And now we have this kind of a result going, which is actually really nice. Um, one thing to uh, note is that uh, this real-time GI doesn't work with uh, ray tracing uh, ray trace reflection so actually Nvidia mentioned about that in their site so so there's some things that we do need to kind of pay attention to um, so um, the reflections may may behave a little bit weirdly I haven't really take a take a look at that yet but um, that's something to keep in mind so um, to control the settings of this is let me to go to the DDGI volume. So we can see that now we have this volume and it has own settings. So these settings are all uh, special settings related to global animation. So you can see we have enable here and then we have upgrade priority and things like that. It um, kind of makes sense. I haven't still like really deep dive to this. But interesting is these uh, probes. So these probes are kind of like uh, probe points inside this volume. So I'm going to visualize probes. I'm going to do this, make sure that they are we can see that now we have these balls, these, these probes. So it's good to have enough of these, uh, what I have noticed. So if, if they are too little, so we can see the probe counts, the amount of them. So if you do like maybe four, three and three and three, this will give us this type of uh, artifacts. So we need to have enough but not too much because if they are too much then we will get crash and we get errors 
so um, maybe something like this could could work okay so we can see that now we have really even even light happening in there even uh, shadows and things like that so yes uh, now we have this this type of scene going maybe I could go and do do like that uh, maybe remove them I could also maybe move these to here so we get more like this kind of atmospheric type of light light going uh, maybe I could copy let's see let's do something like this I'm gonna copy these oh, I'm gonna get rid of those balls because it's just kind of a little bit funny so I'm gonna take that yeah so something like that I'm gonna go maybe go and what I could do is to create some shadows so yeah something like that perhaps so we can see it's uh we can now get occlude, occluded areas like so it's pretty great so it looks very much similar what i'm feeling is that it's very very similar that's what we can see with lumen in unreal engine uh, 5 so so what this is though is this is just completely fully hardware so uh, lumen has this software component to it and uh, it's not like fully fully hardware but um, yeah still like um, this is just great to see that now we have we can uh, fully just take advantage of uh, the current version of Unreal Engine because Unreal Engine 5 is still early access and it's not like really supported either so so yeah this is just a, this is such a fun fun thing to play with and and we just can come up with different tests and things like that maybe go I could also do and maybe make these look smaller so we get more more like a different type of effects so oops I'm gonna go in here I'll just make this smaller a little bit something like that maybe they could be even more smaller like that yeah they could we could actually maybe increase the strength also a little bit maybe do like five so yeah we get this so yeah it really it it it, it, it starts to throw some nice uh, shadows uh, you can see on under the car as well maybe do something like a car commercial here something like that so it is a little bit still funny you can see that the shadow is is indeed a bit funny uh, it's not perfect though so again this is something that we can probably improve if we increase the amount of those probes yeah it, it actually did improve a little bit it also shimmers we can see that there's a bit of this shimmering effect in here so um yeah, I'm not sure um, how that is going to be improved and how things like uh, denoise and those kind of things, how they affect it. But like uh, at least what we do get, we get real time a very, very nice preview. So, of course, obviously, we could also prepare our scene using all of these. And then we could also just come and do like um, if this is a scene that we're working with and we do show something to our client, we're just going to go and... Uh, go here for example perspective uh we could do like um um uh, where it's like yeah ra we could do path tracing from here for example as well so then uh now we are getting path traced light so uh exciting stuff uh, i hope this was uh helpful or inspiring uh do you play around with uh the new rtx gi plugin from uh nvidia it's quite fun and exciting so i'll see you guys uh, soon Bye-bye.